Hey folks, and welcome to Tinkercad for 3D Printing 2021. I am Technivorous, and in this series I'm going to show you from the beginning, step by step, how to use Tinkercad to create your own 3D printed objects. Stay tuned, there's a lot to see, and I've got plenty of these videos coming at you, so don't forget to subscribe. Hey folks, Technivorous here. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, but stick around, because today we're going to be talking about some pretty interesting stuff I don't think you're going to want to miss. All right, folks, we are back in Tinkercad. We are ready for part two of the basics. Today, we are going to be looking at a few other things. So let's go ahead and clear out some of this stuff. Let's try drag selecting all of this and just hit delete. All you have to do is left click and drag. You can select multiple items at a time. Very, very handy for using that group button when combining things. And let's go ahead and drag in this blue polygon here. Now, it doesn't matter what model you grab. Basically, we're going to take a look at the scale features real quick. And the simplest way to do this is to grab, say, the white dot on the top and drag and drop. Just let it go. Let's make it 40. Oh, I only hit 38. Well, guess what? I can just go ahead and select this if I don't feel like fine-tuning it and hit 40. Hit enter. It'll extend it for me, and you can also type in those values as well. Now, one of the other things to note is if I grab this white dot in the corner, it's going to scale along both of those dimensions. That can be handy, it's useful, but it's not necessarily always what you want. So remember, Control z as with most programs, will undo what you just did. And in this case, what I want to do with this guy is grab one of these black dots because I only want to extend it along one dimension here. So we're going to do something like that. Um, and these will keep it from skewing in both directions like the other one was. So let's go ahead and check out copy and paste. So as with control Z, copy and paste is very simple. It's going to be control C, excuse me, control C, and then control V, and that will duplicate your object. So pretty intuitive, pretty common with a lot of the other things that, that a lot of other programs that use the same buttons so that's very very convenient so again here I can just drag and select both of these and group them that way and that is very very interesting so what if I wanted to get those a little closer together and line these corners up perfectly so I can select the hole and as I said I'm moving with my keyboard here and I can get them pretty close uh, if there is an exacting amount that you need to move an item that is what the snap grid is for so let's go ahead and check that out if you take it down to 0.25 millimeters you can get that amount of movement instead okay so changing the snap grid to 0.25 millimeters now makes me need to hit the arrow key four times to traverse across each one millimeter square in the grid so it adds up nicely as maths should and there was one more thing I wanted to point out with the snap grid, and that is the dimensions. Um, you'll notice before when I selected an item, I had my snap grid set to one. It moved in one millimeter increments. If I set my snap grid to five, it'll move in five millimeter increments. So when I have my snap grid set to 0.25 and I'm adjusting scale, it's going to move in 0.25 millimeter increments. So keep that in mind because the small additional fractions of a millimeter when changing between different snap grids in the same objects can lead to them not lining up properly. So if they're not fitting exactly how you'd like them to, check that they're, the snap grid is set to uh, where you need it to be in order to finally increment that. The other thing I wanted to show you real quickly before we end this video is the work plane feature. Now this is very very handy. I have a polygon here with six sides and then two top faces. We're gonna get rid of the hole and let's say I wanted to do something on just this face right here. Well that's where work planes come in. So you can either click the work plane tool and drag it to the surface you want to add an object to. It'll place an orange grid on that surface and then you can go ahead and grab your object and you'll notice how it puts the bottom of that object flat on the workspace on the work surface that I just created um, very very handy tool you can then grab the work plane again and drag it to another plane and manipulate items there 
one of the cool things about the work plane is the hotkey feature you can just hit W and it'll bring a work plane out for you so you don't have to drag and drop and you can just click where you would like it uh, an important thing to note about work planes is if you'd like to clear them completely and go back to your original view all you have to do is place one somewhere that is not an object which doesn't seem to be letting me do it with the menu open there there you go see how it's blue and flat over here that will bring me back to my original work plane so it also works sometimes The W key does seem to work better for that. Sometimes the drag and drop, it won't won't place it uh, on the work plane that you want to return to. But you can tell you're in your original work plane by the blue grid and also the orientation of your model. So that's going to be it for part two of the basics. If you like this video, leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and be sure to stick around because we're going to be covering a lot more in the coming tutorials. We've basically just scratched the surface of the tools we're going to be using to get around and create objects. And in the next videos, we're going to go into some more advanced manipulation techniques, and I will show you some cool tips and tricks. Stick around, guys. I got another YouTube recommended video for you right here. And if you haven't already, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Make sure that you smash that like button. We'll see you in the next one. Technivorous out. This is Tinkercad for 3D Printing 2021, and I am Technivorous. As always, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this video was helpful to you, and stick around. We'll see you in the next one.